Welcome to the FinTech Scaling Show. This podcast is sponsored by ScaleUp Consulting, helping FinTech startups create a scalable organization to support an ever-increasing demand. When you're ready to grow, reach out to us at richard at scaleupconsulting.co. Now, over to the show with Richard Doty, partner and host. folks and welcome to another episode of the fintech scaling show where we talk to leaders that are really shifting the paradigm and we get their insights and their strategies and their, and their tactics on how to scale their companies up but also uh, importantly how do you scale themselves up as they go through a journey of, of ups and downs, let's be honest, right? And today, super excited to finally <laughs> have on the show both uh, Jimmy and Tomas. Uh, they both work at uh, CEO and Tomas is the CEO and Jimmy is the CCO and both have stellar backgrounds and stellar careers inside the, the tech space and the tech industry. So guys, welcome and super excited to uh, have you on the show. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. Yeah, brilliant to be on, Richard. Uh, fun, yeah, I'm happy that we got this scheduled in eventually. Uh, super cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, you know, before we kick off, um, for those of you out there and listening, you know, today's a, an important discussion, right? Uh, and, and one that sometimes sort of gets left to, you know, the back end of, of things when you're scaling up and thinking about sales. And it's... It, it's it's about organization and making certain as you build and scale your company so too you build and scale and structure your organization so that you understand uh and can see whether you are expanding or on the counter uh, you can you contract and you can actually start doing things uh about this right so guys you know Super important topic today. And I think the best place to start is the common denominator in business, and that's people, right? And what I'd like to hear from both of you, maybe Tomas can go first, is what is your philosophy uh, to, on dealing with people? Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually uh, something, you know, we, we always try to uh, x-ray and, uh, and, and improve based on the, the feedback, how we, how we approach situations and how we, how we solve problems. So I would say, you know, people, as you have just said, people are the number one asset to any company because they can, you know, make it better or worse as, as, the, as the outcome. So definitely, I think it's the, the most important investment area. Um, you, you never should be, you know, um, let's say save, save costs or money on, on people. So um, I think, um, you know, as a startup started out from, from this region in Eastern Europe, we had, we had a great, uh, still have a great engineering base, but every startup founder should be conscious about, um, you know, based on the product, what they are building, uh, how, how is the best uh, way to, to market it, you know? And, and, and this is the challenge for many startups, not just from our region, but, you know, from those places where there is a, you can be in a strong engineering base, but actually to market and, and you know, create uh, uh, an efficient business mm -hmm. is, is, is more challenging. So I think um, what, what we got right, and, and I hope other startups can, can, can do something similar, is to actually invest the time and resources to, to find the best leader uh, in, the, in the commercial, such as the sales and marketing end. And then, you know, based on, based on the, 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 the experience and, uh, and, and the know-how which they could bring into a company, um, you know, you can, you can, you can build a, a, a great model on that. So I would say, uh, you know, always uh, look at from the perspective if, if someone is, 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 you know, expensive, many startups like uh, be, try to be more risk aware and not take, you know, not take risk amount of people because they, they, they are like, hey, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's too, we would reduce the runway uh, by, you know, by, by a big percentage and, and you know, we, we wouldn't be able to afford this person. But actually, I think, and that's the truth is like without risks, um, there is no success. So, uh, I think uh, everyone should be conscious about, you know, what's the risk appetite mm -hmm. and uh, invest, you know, in, in, in people uh, and, and you're investing in, in, in people who are the best for the, 
the company because they can really like you know be a game changer and can they can take the company to the next level so uh, i've i've heard things like you know um, from other startups that you know I, I speak with other founders and they they are telling me like oh you know why why would you be work with this headhunter they are too expensive we can find another headhunter for you know half of the cost or why would we hire such an expensive uh, expert in the organization we can find someone much cheaper but what I'm saying is like always, always, you know, like look at the look at the potential results. Like if you bring in someone that, you know, might be not such an expert like someone else, then it's going to have a decreased result of of the actual outcome. So, I think um, in terms of people, you really have to be risk uh, taker, and you have to you have to invest, and you have to you have to you know create a a leadership team that that are consisting uh, mainly or preferably only a players it's not, it's not, it's not sorry mate it's, it's not i think you you think you touched on an po- important point there it's not about cost <laughs> it's it, it can't be about cost when you you scale especially a, a vision business or any business it has to be about value what yeah. value those people or resources bring into your your business that allow you to get from um where you are now incrementally towards where you want to go right uh, jimmy uh, sorry to interrupt what, what were you going to say mate no i was going to add on to this um there's a there's a really famous engineering experiment that's often cited yeah. and it's looking at engineers and these are all a-grade engineers but the difference between the top one and the middling the median is not a 10x return on that it's more like a 50 to 100x mm. and that's the multiple that's quite different with, um, you know, when we look at people there. Um, we also talk about like talent density a lot, uh, mm-hmm. you know, within Seon. Relatively young, so just come up for four years old, uh, Series A back in March, so relatively yeah. young organization. But like Richard, as you know, in our pre-chat, um, yeah, yeah. Pr- kind of pre-Series A, so before pandemic in March last year, year and a half ago, mm-hmm. it was 18 people at Seon, right? One eight. Uh, we're now over 150 people and we'll finish the year up at 200. So this has been like, um, you know, a massive, like <laughs> if we aren't getting the grips with what will, uh, yeah, kind of attract and uh, retain and build the best kind of people as part of this team, then uh, yeah, uh, it's mission critical to us yeah. as well. I think up to 50 people, the the founders, the co-founders should be personally invested uh, in terms of time and resources into mm-hmm. recruitment. So I think that it's very important to build the basis of the organization on people who you want to work with and can, uh, you know, represent the core values of the organization. Mm. And, and of course, over 50 people uh, still for um, head or VP of, or, or of course, C-suite based roles, the founders sh- should be still involved in the recruitment process. But mm. I think up to 50, like that's the threshold where, you know, it's, it's just getting too big and, and already like that should be like a, recruitment uh, uh, depart- recruitment department or, or, or source or department who can take care of finding uh, the best talent. And, and you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's also uh, quite, quite, so, you know, headhunters are actually uh, uh, one of the quickest way to find the best talent, but mm. they're also very expensive. So for an early stage startup, I would, pre- I would suggest to, you know, be as a headhunter, and a founder too so uh you should definitely like reach out to potential candidates um on linkedin you know uh via email and and go to events where mm. you go with the mindset that you know that you will also try to find people and even even long term so like even if you make just connections you know and, and mm. they might be not uh interested at the moment when you meet them but you know as a as a long-term investment building up a strong network is one of the greatest asset, you know, as as as, as an, a, what an entrepreneur can have, and that still takes up a decent part of your day, right? Like yeah. 20, 30 percent of your time is like trying to find the next amazing, like hundred x, you know, kind of people into the team uh, as well. Yeah, we'll be all I guess. Yeah. And so you so you go in as you searching for, let's say, talent, but you know, how do we deal with that? We have these people that like, fine, we attract them, we we get, you know. Good, good folk coming in they're doing you know what we want to do uh, we what we would like them to do right so they're moving us towards our, our mission um but once they're in once we have this team we've gone from what about 18 to 150 what are 
how do you how do you engage? How do you um, how do you make certain that day in day out uh, the folk that that are involved in your in your mission and your purpose are actually you know taking away what they want to take away from uh, the the project and to such an extent that obviously you you retain that talent and there's a sort of a, a vicious cycle of of evolution. Um, I, I can chip in here. So I, I think this all starts even on that first engagement with yeah. you know whoever that is. It's expectation setting, and I think I think for us we're trying to marry up people that want to um, they want to build because that's we're just earlier stage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so much about mega process um, and certainly yeah. not policy. It's people that know they want to get their hands dirty and they can still make change at this stage, and it's going to be for quite a while with us. Yeah. So that's what we're identifying in, and in my head, I'm hoping they are their eyes light up at like yeah. the prospect of being able to make impact and build. Mm -hmm. So it starts from, I think, early engagement. And I, to me, that the get to know you process in the interview is really an extension of that. Um, and then as they interact with our team through that, that's really what we're looking for is someone that can already kind of chip in and start to go, all right, well, that's what I want. So when they're starting on day one, uh, we've got lots of cases, we name them by name, but like where uh yeah we move quite quickly as a startup so we move yeah. quickly in terms of um if, if if it feels like the right feel we probably mm -hmm. still use a lot of like there's a feel uh, mm -hmm. element which is you know we're trying to move more data of course yeah but you know there's because we move so quickly there's oftentimes uh we can get in a position where we can get someone started and that whole time of course uh is much more effective if they're already aligned with us that this mm -hmm. is what they want and it's just an ongoing kind of discussion for that point yeah, um, I, I would add here that, you know, people need to be feel, feel valued. So yeah. even, you know, if they're in the first couple of days, I think it's very important to collect continuously feedback about even the onboarding process, you know, what we could improve. Mm. That's what we you know, like, like not, not just check in with them on, on the first 30 or 60 or 90 days, but also like after the first week, after the second week to see like, you know, how they felt. Is there any, anything we can help? Is, is, is there any blocker or, or you know, if, if they have any any tool or access that's that might be missing? So, uh, and, 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 you know, we also really try to cultivate a culture where uh, innovation will be encouraged and, and people can, you know, chip in with any ideas during a meeting, even new people. So we don't want to, uh, you know, discourage people from throwing out ideas because they would be uh, scared that, you know, if the idea is not good, then we would, we would not, you know, uh, listen to them or we would not implement them. And even that's, that's the main thing. Like, you know, if people are feeling free and confident enough to, to share openly ideas and, 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 you know, uh, and even if they have any, any concern or they feel like there's a bottleneck in, in their daily job, then yeah. to speak about that is, is very important. And, and, you know, like have a session where we can find a solution to, to all, all of this. Yeah, and you mentioned something. You mentioned something there earlier on, um, Jimmy. As as you onboard, you know the, the folk into the business, they they're actually able to. Well, both of you actually mentioned it, you. They're actually able to start straight away, right? And they they feel part of. They feel already part of the team. They start producing. But you know what are what are the, the, the maybe the, some of the tactics that, that you put in place other than, than the, the, the couple of points that we just mentioned that make certain that once someone comes in, they are productive from day one? Yeah, um, I can say like a few things there. Yeah. Um, one on a tactical level from moment one, like I said, in pre them joining, yeah, yeah. understand implicitly they're, they're being brought on because of whatever background or expertise they already have. And that's an additive to our team. So we value that and we want to encourage, um, empower and absolutely support them on day one. They could already chip in on whether it's SEO, yeah. whether it's uh, on uh, demand gen, you know, as yeah. some examples, we want them to chip in. They are the new experts and, and everyone's got open ears wanting to learn, uh, you know, from that. So that's a day one additive thing. That's the first thing. Um, yeah. Tommy kind of mentioned it there in our onboarding session, um, you know, Tamash, Benz and myself, we still mm -hmm. make sure we welcome each cohort coming into the business so that they hear the founding story, the why yeah. behind we as a startup exist. Mm -hmm. And even from that first interaction, there's a mini AMA 
where they get a chance to, hey, hey, Tamash, why did you do it like this? Mm. Or, you know, what was it like to win the first customer? You know, those kind of whatever That's questions. That's anything session. Yeah, yeah. basically. Like we, yeah. we are, yeah, we are trying to, you know, create a very flat hierarchy when, you know, anyone from the, the associate levels can, levels can ever come to us, uh, you know, to founders or, or, or Jimmy event to, to ask, questions you know and and, and 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 you know hear directly from the from the source or or you know also to suggest things uh, uh, and, and and you know i think that's that's what keeps people also motivated so we, we definitely like you can read you know a lot of um let's say like um unoptimal things from even startups you know from from the employees when it's very like a, a common and control type of mm. leadership in place and and you know this actually doesn't uh, cultivate so much innovation but it's to get things you know the fastest way done might be you know a, a good approach mm -hmm. but long term i think uh culture such as you know netflix has can be the most um innovative for you know uh for for being able to to let people just you know come out with ideas mm -hmm. and and be the most um you know um it's not about efficiency it's about innovation in, in that mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and on to that point, like, um, so we use Slack in a very intentional mm. way. Um, yeah. We wait towards meaning 70% uh, of our channels in there are public and open by design. Mm. Um, so the point is, is folk can dip into cross-functional areas if they want, and they hear that chatter. That's kind of by design, 70%, I would say. Um, and we're, we're telling people this on the onboarding, you know, we, we're all uh slack first in terms of comms so everything's kind of relatively instantaneous mm -hmm. um and the idea is it, it, it discouraging dms in there because yeah. the design thesis is that other people if you're asking that question then there's a good chance that four or five others who have not um mm -hmm. maybe not piped up on it can learn from that thread as well mm -hmm. um so tactically in, in terms of like trying to continue that um, learning atmosphere. That's what we want is use of Slack there. We of course use like stuff like an internal wiki, uh, which starts to uh, introduce a documentation first culture into what we're doing. Uh, and we're always thinking like, how can we, if we have to repeat it more than twice, we kind of need people. And the key is not Tamash to document or me to document. Yeah. The actual key is that day one person who brings that expertise to feel empowered to document. That's actually what our objective is there. Yeah. You mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned communication, you mentioned flat hierarchy, and you also mentioned sort of cross-functional collaboration. Okay, so, you know, uh, we go into sort of the, the, the guts of, uh, of your business here, but what, what's the benefit um, for, those, for those listening? What, can you describe the benefit of a, a flat hierarchy? What does it give you as as leaders in a in a scaling business? Um, Tamashka. Yeah, I would say you know like as an organization is growing, like you, you always make changes. You know, you add layers yeah. below above people, and sometimes you know some some managers can become the just middlemen in processes, right? Like maybe someone is just you know retrieving information from one point to another and retrieving back inf information, like transmitting thoughts, feedback, maybe it might be like a filter, you know, in the process, because mm -hmm. then they might capture things from a different perspective that might be altered and, you know, provided as an, uh, as different uh, output. Um, so I would, I would really think that, you know, having a flat architect, uh, uh, structure when actually associates can, you know, come to me and, and ask or, or propose things or, or even mm -hmm. to other levels. Is, 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 is very useful um, in the sense of, of, you know, even these, these people will feel empowered and, and feel that they can make a change and, and you know, mm -hmm. they have actually uh, influence on decision-making process, which is very true. I think yeah. that as a, as a leader, every time you should, you know, capture all the remarks, feedback and thoughts um, mm -hmm. uh, as you are, you know, creating a, a, or setting up a decision, uh, you have to take into consideration all the point of views. And in the end, when you have done that, in that case, you should, you know, Come to a conclusion but when you know it's about very rigid bureaucratic hierarchy uh, hierarchy in, in in place uh then it can mean that you know people are not willing to speak up and not willing to share uh, new ideas because they would feel that you know their direct managers might mm. not like the idea and they, they, they are just you know isolated mm. uh, 
and, and working in a silo. And that's not what we want to uh, achieve uh, at, at any point. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back into a tactic, actually. It just made me think. So yeah. every month we have, a, and we've had this ever since we were actually, you know, kind of 18 people. Um, they ask me anything concept. So other people call it like a town hall, stand up. Yeah. And actually one thing we found is, um, and I wasn't sure if it was also cultural as well. Uh, so most of our team is out in Budapest. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we have London, we have Austin, and we have Jakarta. Yeah. Um, but I, I, and I wasn't sure if it was cultural, but almost like a reticence to take full advantage of that AMA, partly because there's like a lot of people in it now, right? They're joining yeah, the yeah. Zoom, some they're in person, and it's just to ask those questions uh, related to work, though, I'd have to say. <laughs> so not <laughs> a completely irrelevant AMA, but like, you know, I had a chance to ask kind of, you know, hey, what's up with this? Um, and one thing we found made a big difference was um, introducing stuff like Slido, and going to, um, ideally, we wanted someone like, you know, please, Richard, please put your name up and own it. Uh, you know, there's, we've got a transparent culture. But then we found that the response rate shot up like crazy when we said, you know what, if you want, do it anonymously, uh, because then you're not putting a big spotlight on you. And there's not been any, like, I would say super dicey questions or mm. spicy questions, you know, it's been, but, but that's helped the kind of candidness, mm. if you like um from and the questions have all been decent they've not been like silly 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 questions uh, from that side yeah. and you know we're talking i mean ultimately it's structure communication 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 we talk about how you as a team are consistently looking at different ways to to communicate and you know you pivoting or changing the tactic depending on the result in this in this case obviously you tweaked it uh from you know richard please shout please shout out to richard don't worry about shouting out be anonymous and you know again it's, it's communication making certain everyone is part of the team everyone is part of the process um extracting yourself away from the internal world how do you communicate externally such that your your audience also understands where you are in your journey and um, if they want to lean in and get some help for for whatever reason they can yeah i would say that you know if we if you think about like customers to us yeah. like we have built up a very uh, strong customer success team yeah. that are you know uh helping our clients very proactively onboarding and, and you know getting help with with any parts of the product and checking in regularly so when we look at you know like how how Sion is represented it's very important to uh you think about like you know um as a very customer facing organization and you know the way how we face customers are not just the sales people that are also the customer success people yeah. and 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 you know everyone should have uh, they should all represent the same values of 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 Sion, you know, approach question question and challenges from the same you know perspective. And also, if, like if if someone is trying to challenge us or like someone is trying to be like not the most friendly, mm -hmm. uh, then you know we should all um, you know appreciate that still and 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 just provide the same type of help, you know, and and the same type of uh, assistance to to any any stakeholder in in a process. When, and let me talk about external parties when, when you know, like, um, let's, let's say, like, you know, external agencies who we work with yeah. for marketing or, or, or even like it could be PR or even like, you yeah. know, let's say infrastructure management, then we all have the mindset that, you know, we, we think about them as they will be like internal uh, teammates. So mm. we also, you know, share the same vision with them, we explain the same stories, mm. we try to involve them it's as they would sit next to us because the way how they will be the, the highest performers, they should be like always included. And inclusion is very important, but not, um, you know, it's, 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 I don't want to like create, use it as a Weasley word, but let's say like inclusion mainly means for us um, in terms of like, you know, communication mm -hmm. that we try to include as many people to a, to a meeting as possible. And even, you know, if they are not 100% relevant or they are another department, you still invite them to a meeting and they might just, you know, reject you can invite as op optional participants and then they might just say like, hey, yeah, it's not relevant to me. But the main idea is to always be, you know, uh, inclusive to every potential uh, relevant uh, uh, teammate. And, and, and that's very important. And then, you know, when you have a feedback session, 
they might you know add additional value just by listening to a call and, and having like a better understanding of you know what's going on on different ends and and the departments that that and, and you know in a, in a remote world that's that's super important you know you can join any meeting through zoom so we also invested quite heavily into these uh um specific uh you know like uh, meeting room setups we have uh, like a specific bar that we put on TVs and in every office we have yeah. multiple rooms we have these you know big uh, TVs with with a with a with a, with a, with a, a camera on it and, and and you know it, it really feels like if they would be like physically there and, and you know it, it, it also helps us to uh, enable like a, a more embedded uh, type of uh, communication and, and and you know these meetings are more efficient like this. Jimmy would you want to add anything? Yeah, um, from a go-to-market motion, yeah. uh, we were Zoom first even pre-COVID uh, mm -hmm. um, and our base is international by default of who uses our um, tech. Um, and because of that, we've layered on a couple of stacks which accelerate that uh, consistency around our whole startup and then external partners as well. So we use uh, conversational tools which literally are our note takers. Um, so then after a, yeah. a, a meeting, and this could be, new prospect, it could be customer success, you know, educating them on how to get more use out of our tech. Yeah. And all of that shared in Slack, it's, I would say the word to describe us is probably overshare <laughs> on yeah. information. Uh, Which is the thing. Yeah, 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 like it's all out there. We're not like, that's why we don't want stuff in private groups. We want it in open. Yeah. So, so some, yeah, someone in product can check it out. Our chief yeah. architect can go hear the problem. We tag, you know, all relevant members. Marketing can see Man, yeah. this was the pain point. This was a use case. Yeah. It's a very, very yeah. useful tool, and there are multiple uh, options out there that you know um, um, basically uh, transcribe a meeting and create yeah. like a view when you can see like when at some point you know who spoke and and what was the questions. You can tag a specific time time yeah. time point. You can share as a link. So if you know you had an interesting conversation with the client and, and you they mentioned something, you can just share the link. Hey, please listen to this. Here's the link, and they click on it. And then from that very specific second, you can hear what the clients have said. And, and, and you know, I think the world is moving this way. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's what, you know, we are accelerate businesses as well. And, 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 you know, I think there's still always new ideas uh, that can be, uh, uh, you know, used, but I think businesses should adopt, even if they are like, you know, like old school type of uh, companies, they should still adapt to the, to the new world and, and use tools like that. Even uh, from day one, right? Like what you Benza did was like really listen to like it, you know the, our product development is completely driven by customer, of course, yeah, uh, as sure. any early stage tech company is. So despite us, um, you know, having really fortunate healthy growth and the the team growing at that level, um, the point of these is it still allows almost like founding team to listen in, right, to direct yeah. prospect pain. And then it literally like it changes our conversations for hey, what's our next six months going to look like in terms of where we build uh, as well. So that's the advantage of having that overshare, I, I think. Uh, yeah. but, but here's the thing, right? So uh, at the top of the show, we said we started off with you know what's your philosophy on dealing with people, and I think you guys have just summed it up. It's it's an inclusive. It sounds like you have an inclusive philosophy, and it extends beyond you know the the four walls of, of your building, uh, and it goes out to your ecosystem, your partners, the agents you work with, uh, and obviously also your your customers. Customers. And, you know, for anyone listening right now, this is, you know, the bedrock of, of dealing with people. Include them in your journey. Uh, your journey could be uh, whatever your journey is, get everyone, all stakeholders included in that and share. And uh, once you share, you can all sort of move up that ladder incrementally together, right? So some awesome insights there. And as you, as you go and you, you look at your the structures you've put in, you've got the communications and, you know, uh, and all these Slack channels, et cetera, set up. You know, there's also the, the nitty gritty of um, making certain that each department does produce um, what I like to call a product, um, but does produce stuff at the end of the day. Sales is producing, you know, new customers, new opportunities. Marketing is producing that that want, that reach. You know, product obviously is producing that awesome product that, that uh, the customers so, so dearly want. Um, and in, in that respect, how are you, how are you, how have you structured your business so that you can 
understand whether you know a, a part of it is maybe expanding and doing well or another part of it at the same time is maybe not doing so well and needs a bit of attention yeah uh, I, I can lead with this um so it's important yeah. to mention for us richard um yeah, yeah. we operate our go-to-market motions are product-led growth meaning essentially we're letting it do a lot of the talking for us and messaging so for, exactly. for our market particularly it's around trying to get a prospect with a pain to an aha light bulb moment of yep. holy, holy moly, this could really affect and improve my yep. workflow. That's that's kind of the, the key. So I would say everything else kind of flows into that. So product is first, followed by marketing to loudspeaker that out um, yep. and create hopefully useful content that gets people to discover our website and hit yep. or get demo CTA or try for free CTA. And then at the very back end of that is I would say sales and then CS to kind of help someone get to aha uh, yeah. there. Um, we, we tend yeah. to tend to call even like uh, sales people instead like product evangelists because they are not focused on like you know just signing the contract. They're focused on educating the clients about the tool exactly. and the product, and, and you know help them to solve the problem, not to make a deal, mm -hmm. but help them to solve the problem, which is the ultimate goal of the partnership. So. Yeah. And our, a good point to mention here is because of the way we work commercially is um, it's usage-based pricing. Yep. So our whole people org is set up towards that philosophy of mm -hmm. how can I help Richard and his team literally solve more problems? Uh, and then the kind of back end, back end of that is they use more APIs, they get more value from it. And you know that's how we grow alongside our customers. So if you look at our customers, um, they tend to be within the kind of fintechy startup space uh yep. so the more dev and uh kind of tech they are it's a really great fit for us that's why we're twinned out of nice. london and uh and budapest on that side if you take and i love the philosophy i think uh product level growth understanding the pain points and really ultimately adding value to you know you know joe or jill blogs uh their life is the way to go but you know if you look at how do you then measure that sort of expansion and or contraction? Is it sort of the, the number of uh, people actually clicking on that, that CTA, CTA button at the back end of a, of a marketing uh, campaign? Or, you know, is it the new product that's just about to get launched and maybe that new product isn't going to get launched because, I don't know, somewhat, something's going on in the team? So, yeah, what... What, um, what parts do you look at uh, that, that gives you the insights to really uh, control where yeah. you're going? I would say that, you know, in one hand, we try to use OKRs and yeah. within specific KPIs for metrics. And almost it's, it, it, almost it's doable for all departments and teams. So yeah, exactly. we can do it for, you know, the recruitment team. Um, you know, that means that even we can do for the people team. When we measure ENPS, for example, yeah. uh, measure in the customer success team normal NPS as well, you know, um, and 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 you know, don't want to go through all the departments and there, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's it's very important to have like an OKR for each of these departments so they align, you know, what the team is working towards. Yeah. And it's it's not you know like something that you know like multiple pages long. It's just like two yeah. sentences or three sentences. Yeah, yeah. But then you back up, you know, what the goal towards you're working on with KPIs. And then these KPIs should be always numerical and you could measure them. That's very important. Yeah. And then, you know, they could, uh, well, their main uh, aim is to work towards to reach those KPIs, you know, and, 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 and still understand what, what are the bigger vision. And of course, mm -hmm. it can happen that, you know, they might not hit something or, or, or not completely fully hit something. But then, you know, this is very important. So we analyze, you know, what went wrong, what we could do. Mm -hmm together as a joint effort to, to make it right and, and how to, you know, structure uh, a more achievable format for the team. And, and, you know, if the team needs some more resources, more help, then also it's a good way to understand whether the time has come to expand the team, maybe add a layer above or, you know, um, change change the structure and, and help them to, to do a more fruitful work. But, you know, of course, this, this is in a hyper growth environment. It's yeah. happening so quickly that some, some employees might, you know, feel stressed because of all these, you know, uh, increasing number of projects and, and responsibilities yeah. and, and, you know, uh, ever-changing job description for some roles. And, 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 you know, it's not for everyone. 
Yeah. But if you if you enjoy it, then it can be, and, and you strive, you know, in, in your position, then it can be very, very uh, appreciated as well. So I, I, I get it. Uh, and uh, I, I see the, the different parts and I you know, fully, fully get the, sort of the MPS scores or the marketing scores, etc. But, you know, as what do you look, you know, what do you as a both of you as, as leaders, what do you take away, take away the, the crap, take away, take away the shit and, you know, the, the mirage of analytics and OKRs and all the stuff that are thrown at us. But what do you what do you look at and, and go, OK, you know, actually this week, uh, the marketing team needs a bit of help. I need to jump in. I need to help out. Or, or this week, the, the dev team um is doing pretty well let's 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 actually take them out for a beer what, what, what are the what are the key uh maybe the, the three key things uh, from both of you that that you look for that as a leader can help you help others in your team yeah i can, I can maybe chip in first um, <laughs> i think no surprise for a series a startup we are ultimately yeah. still looking at arr monthly <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah there we go and then, 100%. and then everything flows into that right yeah. um, so despite it being the flip flip way around it's the yeah. lag indicator but that's the thing that tells us roughly if are we making a difference to our customers are they getting value and thus does it reflect in our yeah. mrr uh, as yeah. it in our arr uh, yeah. there so I would say that's definitely part of it. If I was to yeah. drill down a bit, bit lower, I would say leading indicators. You know, I'm in. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I look after commercial, yeah. so I'm looking at uh, everything from new deals created a week, yeah. um, because that's a proxy yeah. for are we converting well? Are we having rich conversations? Are we having enough volume of conversation? Yeah. To marketing, um, how many good demos are they creating? So yeah, from all that awesome like dummies guide to fraud fighting, yeah, you know, yeah. projects, we have like these kind of quirky live yeah. webinars debates. Does it generate enough good demos? Nice. That's yeah. what I said. Oh, okay. yeah, and, you know, and, and you know, if you ever look top five on the marketing end, like you know, website visitors, the channel yeah. I from how much we invested in those channels, you know, from paid media to organic SEO, you know, how much those okay. department cost, and and you know, where uh, uh, of course when it goes to like demos, and then you know the um, extension of existing yeah. clients, so numbers like CAC, CLV. Uh, very important and that's what investors look at as well eventually like exactly. what people asks uh, or usually ask you know uh, is like what's your arr you know what, where you were like beginning yeah. of year, where you want to be end of next year so can, you know set up uh, some some graphs in in in, in their head that can help them to evaluate whether your business is worth to invest in or not yeah. um, and in terms of product you know it's it's a very very complex topic because there are so many, uh, you know, moving parts that yeah. you know, it's very hard to like execute on deadlines. Mm. So I would say that, you know, since we're building on a core product and we are the, you know, the inventors of our own products. So mm. um, of course the clients provide feedback and, 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 and you know, we, we also build features on, on that, but eventually we build the same core product. So mm. it's, just, it's, it's just something, you know, we have to be conscious about that, hey, you know, the deadlines are usually not something that, you know, set in stone because there can be like blockers, people can be you know, sick, people can, uh, can, can you know, have, have a blocker in the process that needs another yeah. supplier to be involved and then it takes time or, or like it's possible that your, one of your suppliers just, you know, like, like one day to another, they just stop providing the service and, and then yeah. you have to like, you know, like uh, also involve all the different departments and then, you know, find a new one and then still like manage client expectations. So super, super stressful if that happens, but, you know, you always have to think about the way when, when everyone will be, will feel happy in then, then it will be a win, 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 win situation for, for all the relevant parties. We were joking at dinner uh, last night about, man, how can we get JIRA task completion? Like uh, just measured perfectly. Yeah. That's the dream of every tech company. Yeah, right? yeah, JIRA. Any, yeah. Any, any engineering front, how can we actually quantify and hold accountable like this? So yeah. it, it's an ongoing thing. Like yeah, that's yeah. reality as well. And yeah. I, I would say that if like, when you talk about JIRA tasks or any other task, you know, all of them has different, you know, like time uh, needed to, to execute on. So mm -hmm. you can't, you can't say like, oh, you know, like this developer has uh, uh, finished like seven Jira tasks and this one only finished four. Maybe, you know, the four was like 10 times bigger yeah. than, yeah, than yeah. the one uh, together. So uh, it's more about like, hey, does people, you, you do, you know, do, do line managers feel that everyone is doing their best? Do they give 100%? 
or do they not? That's the question, in my opinion. Um, and not the question is like, how do we always measure the best way? But do you do you see people like doing their best and bring you know innovation to, to the table? If that's not the case, you might have not hired the best people, but that should be the case. And then like that's that helps you know a company to to even be more successful. And in the end, it results you know on, on the ARR or all the different metrics that investors look at for example 100 back to the people um and i totally agree with you there to totally agree and as you as you look outwards and you look yeah by the way it is not it is nearly the end of the year so we look to sort of 2022 and beyond what are what are the questions that you guys are asking yourselves over the dinner table and what are the factors that you are are considering as you sort of head into the into the final quarter and obviously or in, into 2022 yeah and jimmy why don't you go first yeah, yeah we made um so our whole a thesis as a startup is that you know we wanted to bring cutting edge tools to the whole of market because the way yeah. we looked at it was there was brilliant risk tech out there and that's yeah. my background as well yeah. as in that kind of space but everyone's aimed at that kind of tier one kind of uh, market that's the yeah. tap for them and, you know, it's literally Tommy and Benza's like origin story that they needed something to not kick in in weeks, but to kick in in minutes. Otherwise, they were dead as a business, as an online business. So with that in mind, it was a, a, our thesis is that that mid and long tail is like a, it, they need, they're hungry and underserved uh, for this. So our thesis was, um, was into this. And uh, I would say, Next year, I think, is where we realize some of the bets we've made in 21 in terms of more retail platforms that yeah. we'll be serving with like a one-click integration um, to some other, uh, some really cool announcements uh, we'll make uh, kind of uh, in this quarter uh, into that kind of space. But yeah, we're, we're doubling down on being true to that mission in, de in democratizing fraud fighting with even more help to those SMBs and nice. kind of mid mid organization. So that's for me a big focus, at least commercially on marketing and kind of sales end. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, in the end, since we are a product led organization, we try to be one. Yeah. I think uh, the decisions we make now, even on the product on the product roadmap, will have an impact on our on our revenue and on our mm. uh, every every metric we have. So we we try to spend a lot of time with our customers too to understand like what they would like to have, what they would need. And, and then you know uh, implement those in our in our pipeline mm. and and otherwise you know if we wouldn't do that we would not create something that can be used or or or, 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 or you know are, are appreciated or uh, uh, implemented by the customers at some point because it's just not yeah. what they wanted to do to, to do um yeah it's it's uh, yeah it's it's something that you know uh is, is, is as jimmy said is, is a bet almost yeah. all the phases but you can make an educated bet uh, mm -hmm. If you spend enough time to understand like what the customer wants and how they want it, and that's why you know even cross-functional team and moving into the cross-functional team setup in the product uh, org made a huge difference uh, in terms of execution and involvement. And 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 you know when when you're an entrepreneur, uh, especially when you're a first-time entrepreneur, then you don't have maybe examples you know of of, of of from your experience. Um, and and you know. Uh, for every type of organization, it requires a different type of setup. But in the end, uh, you can take the best examples. And, and, you know, if you find an investor that can help you to connect to entrepreneurs that, you know, can help and, and provide you insights and feedback and, and coach you even, and, um, then, you know, in that case, you can implement those frameworks and, and create playbooks for the departments and, yeah. and then, you know, uh, actually execute uh, at, the, at, the, at the highest uh, uh, rate. Brilliant. And, you know, as we wrap up uh, the, the, the podcast, I uh, always like to ask guests how they uh, self-educate. Because you mentioned here, um, just at the end, you, you're, always looking out, you're always looking for ways to you know, connect with others in this instance and, you know, learn. And how do you guys, um, you know, go out and educate or build up your knowledge so that uh, you're able to achieve what you want to achieve, whether it's, you know, podcast books or YouTube channels that you think are industry interesting to others out there that uh you want to share with us maybe tomas you go first and then jimmy uh you roll it up after i would say that uh you know as a as, a, as an entre entrepreneur or, or even like if you you know sit in a in a c-suite at a company you could be 
very open-minded to you know incorporate and, and and listen to to everyone and and you know just be yeah. open to feedback so i think in terms of education I, I i tend to look at everyone as a as a mentor to me like you know you should be uh always listening and then you know make an educated decisions and mm. in terms of like what uh what i consume on a daily basis i i tend to like uh look at you know industry specific articles blog posts and and you know try to look at examples from companies so there are so many blogs out there just if you talk about like product-led growth you can go on yeah. product.com uh, or, or you know like uh, uh, open you like as an investor that I create like tons of useful content and benchmarks and and, and then uh, if for every type of you know topic like even for product development you know there are uh, blogs run by other successful startups that you know uh, are sharing engineering best practices mm. you should definitely like spend all of your free time <laughs> if, if if possible to to read and, and and you know see how other companies solve different problems and, and what are the examples you can think and of course you can read books by you know uh, writers from like successful ceos so that's also very useful uh, but for me personally like i like more like shorter type of 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 Piece, uh, content pieces yeah we've got um the, the the culture of like continuously learning is yeah. uh something we look for as well uh, so let alone and it's even more important at you know tamash's level for sure um and i think i think that's uh you know absolutely ingrained in us so uh, for me personally just a couple of tactical things uh, yeah. Uh, I'm part of uh, something which is known as, it was known as Revenue Collective, but Pavilion. Um, so that's, you know, top rev leaders in SaaS kind of around yeah. the world. Um, and, that's, and that's been awesome for, the important thing is external points of view mm. that you can just get feedback on what you're doing, yeah, as well. Um, so that's massive, of course. And then let alone even more bonus if they're frameworked already. So you can kind of try and pick up some of those uh, nifty, uh hard lessons uh you know one, one there straight away and i really hope that you know like the, the kind of blog we are running is also helpful for other companies to mm. learn more about how to prevent fraud with mm. diy methods because that's the way how we generate inbound traffic too so mm. we also try to give back you know to other uh SaaS businesses uh, even if they don't want to invest in a tool or a service mm. they can learn about how to solve problems on their own and then you know maybe uh, uh that's the that's the best way to approach you know the, the whole b2b and, and SaaS space mm -hmm. that you know you always give back to the community and try to help other companies in every, every way possible definitely and another like thing we do actively is we for fu funding rounds we've actually opened up small allocations uh mm -hmm. for actually a, a new influx of angels and so that was very deliberate. So, you know, we're super lucky. We have like the founders of N26, uh, Sum Up Original founder, like uh, Revolut CFO, Tide CEO. <laughs> and so these guys are like part of the say on, like, you know, cap, cap, that's the reality. Uh, and on Fide on Comply Advantage. And so we did that deliberately to learn from. These guys are like five, six, seven years ahead of us. And, you know, they were stoked by, you know, kind of the, the start of the Seon journey, but then Tamash, myself, Benza, we try and actively learn with these guys, whether it's grabbing a beer, right? And yeah, we yeah. have that beer time with them to literally them on WhatsApp and we're asking a tactical question. Yeah. Um, so we're always trying to improve that network uh, via proven world-class uh, leaders as well. For sure. Brilliant. Uh, and to sum it up, it's back to the people. I mean, you guys, uh, we, we've spoken a lot about uh, people today and, and how to deal with people and the philosophy on people. We've also dived into subjects around uh, structure, communication, what to look for as you go on and grow your business, and also what uh, what points to maybe look for um, if you're contracting uh, and what to do. So, you know, if anyone wants to, you know, drop me a note and if they have any questions off the back of today's uh, podcast, please uh, reach out to me either on LinkedIn or, or other channels or drop me a note at richard at scaleupconsulting.co. Happy to have a chat. And gents, super uh, to have you on the show today. Excellent discussion. And, uh, you know, really looking forward to watching your journey uh, and seeing the the success that comes out of it because there's there's only one way this is going to go right uh, especially of today's conversation uh thoroughly enjoyed it and you come across as 
real leaders that they want to make a difference, not just uh, on the business side of things, but also on the people side of things, which is, as we said at, at the top end of the show, is, is the common denominator to, uh, to a successful business. So thanks again. Thank yeah. you, Richard. Cheers, Richard. Thanks.